So in this equation, we have a tan theta and a secant theta function. So we want to be able to convert one into the other. In this case, we can use the identity tan squared is equal to secant squared minus one. And we're going to do a like for like replacement. So tan squared theta is replaced by secant squared theta minus one. And then we end up with a quadratic equation in terms of secant. So we'll be at secant squared theta minus secant theta minus two equals zero. Since it's a quadratic, I can factor this. So two numbers that multiply to negative two and add to negative one are gonna be negative two and positive one. Once I have the factored form, I can solve each factor individually. So I can solve for secant theta equals two. Now I wanna convert that into cosine. So secant theta equals two, cosine theta is equal to one half. Over here we get secant theta is equal to negative one half, sorry, negative one. And then we take the reciprocal to get cosine theta equals to the reciprocal of negative one, which is negative one. So now we've solved for the cosine, we could solve for the angle. So drawing my circle in here, for cosine theta equals one half, that's gonna be where the horizontal is gonna be one half. So we end up with this picture here, just zooming in a bit. That's gonna be horizontal is one, the radius is two, the angles are going to be in quadrant one. The angle that I'm looking for is gonna be based on that 30, 60 triangle. So I'll call that theta one. Theta one is equal to pi over three. So it's 30, 60 degrees. And the theta two is gonna be negative 60 degrees. Now, since the angle is between zero and two pi, I've got to measure in the positive direction. So although that's the correct angle position, I need to express this in terms of a positive angle. So I'm gonna add two pi to that, or six pi over three, and I get the answer five pi over three. So that's one solution, or one set of solutions. I've got another value of cosine theta is equal to negative one. Again, cosine is on the horizontal, so negative one is gonna be at the far left. That position there, I'm gonna call theta three, and that's gonna be at pi. And because of that positioning, the symmetry is folding across the x-axis. There's not two different positions that, can, that are gonna give me that same uh, ratio. So there are all three angles. This is, these three angles represent the set of solutions of one period between zero and two pi. This next equation, we have sine two x minus cos x. Well, we need to get rid of that. We need to do something with the sine and we have a double angle happening here. So what we wanna do is use an identity to get rid of that double angle. So the identity I'm going to use is sine 2x is the same as two sine x cos x. So replacing sine 2x with two sine x cos x, that resolves the issue of the double angle. I still have to deal with the fact that I have cosine and sine together. But what I can do is I can separate out the cosine through factoring. And since it's equal to zero, we can factor and solve these factor parts independently of each other. And it has to be equal to zero because these factors, if it's equal to zero, one of these multipliers just needs to be zero and that will give me the solution to the equation. So cosine x equals zero is one solution. Sine x 
is equal to positive one over two is the other solution. So drawing cosine x equals zero, cosine is a horizontal value, so it's gonna be at pi over two. And the other angle position is gonna be at the very bottom of the circle or three pi over two. This represents one period worth of solutions from zero to two pi. For sine theta equals one half, sine is a y value. So the vertical position is positive one and the radius is two. Those triangles represent 30, 60 triangles. So theta three is gonna be pi over six. And then the other angle is going to be five pi over six, or we can use the symmetry and say that it's pi minus theta one, or in this case, theta three. And that gives us to the position right there, which is five pi over six. So these solutions represent one period of solutions. And since the period is two pi now, since we got rid of that horizontal compression of two here, we know that we have one period worth of solutions or zero to two pi worth of solutions. For this last one here, we have a cubic function. Well, to solve cubics, we have to, first of all, make it equal to zero and factor. So I'm gonna factor a sine x out of this expression, and I'm gonna end up with sine x times sine squared x minus three over four. And that's equal to zero. I can solve the sine x independent, independently of that other bracket. I'm just gonna keep it for now. So I have sine x. I can still factor this. This is a difference of squares. So I'm gonna end up with sine x plus the square root of three over two. So when I square that, I get back to three over four. And then I get the conjugate sine x minus square root three over two. And that's equal to zero. So I can solve this equation independently of this one and independent of this one here. So because they're factored equal to zero, each one of those can be solved independent from each other. So here I get sine x equals zero. Drawing that out, sine x is zero at those two points. So x could be equal to zero or pi. For the next bracket, sine x is gonna be equal to negative root three over two. So when I draw that out, negative root three over two is going to be in quadrants three and four. Root three is the long side of that triangle. Actually, let me just draw that a little bit nicer. It's going to be the long side of that triangle. So in this triangle, we get negative root three over two. And the same thing over here, that's going to be negative root three. That's the long side of that triangle. That happens to be one and negative one, but we don't need that to establish that position. That being a 30, 60 triangle, we can then, we know that that reference angle is 60 degree angle or pi over three. So I'm gonna go from pi and add pi over three. I end up with four pi over three as the first angle. The quadrant four angle is gonna be six pi over three or two pi going backwards. So that position is five pi over three. Lastly, I'm gonna solve the last bracket independently, so that's gonna give us sine x is equal to positive root three over two. 
that's going to be the same solution, but now in quadrant two and one on those two positions. So I'm going to have positive root three over two. So the position angle of the first quadrant angle is going to be 60 degrees or pi over three. And the position of the quadrant two angle is going to be 180 minus 60 or pi minus pi over three. So that's two thirds pi. So there are six solutions in one period. The period is going to be from zero to two pi. So that accommodates all the solutions in the domain that we've been asked for.